And well, welcome to the start of what will be a very cold and icy British winter. And what better time than to introduce you to some of the features that I've noticed on this particular Seiko Monster. Not just the dial, but in my experience, the case has certain levels of attention to detail that I'll show you, the case and the bracelet, that I'm not sure you find on every Seiko monster, and certainly not on a lot of Seiko divers. They've gone to town with some of the attention to detail on these watches. Hello and welcome to The Perfect Wrist. This channel is all about trying to find that watch that just fits the wrist perfectly. Welcome to the last Seiko review of 2024. I am trying to stick to one Seiko a month now. That is quite hard. I am a bit of a Seikoholic. That is slowly turning around. There's a lot of turnover in the collection. And I think one Seiko a month is more than enough. If you've been plowing through Seiko's catalog of dive watches, it can be overwhelming. This may be one that caught your eye. And I do want to just point out features that have impressed me with this particular watch. We're gonna look at the dial, the case, and the bracelet, in particular the bracelet. Now this watch has never actually had a full review yet on the channel. I have had it for a year and it has featured in the state of the collection and in the background of a few other videos but I have to say it has sat in the box a lot of the time but when I took it out and wore it and had a good look at it again I was very very impressed with what Seiko had done in a few key areas. As many of you will know, Seiko every year, I'm not sure that they did it this year, but certainly the last few years, they've brought out two or three watches under their Save the Ocean range. These models are still available new, and these are date back to 2021. So they certainly haven't sold out. They're no longer in production, but uh, and there are plenty available. Now, taking a look at the dial, it's exquisite. You can see the little penguin feet running up the side there. And the dial itself is a frosty ice scape. A fume effect that obviously goes from almost white at the centre out to dark. The loom is exceptional. As you would expect with a Seiko diver. The brushed stainless bezel has a lovely action. Listen to that. Isn't that nice? It all lines up, which hasn't been a given with Seiko at this sort of price range over the last few years. I think some extra effort has gone into these Save the Ocean models. One criticism I don't even know if you'll notice, but I can notice, when the crystal has been put on, it is ever so slightly out of line with the date window. Perfectly legible, but it's slightly lower on the right hand side than the left. What a shame. The case is predominantly brushed, but you'll notice that the edge of the bezel is highly polished so that does catch the light beautifully 
there's quite a lot of accents on this particular watch that you do notice over time. It's the same with the top of this case area. While it's brushed, that top edge is polished. So that does reflect the light. The screw down case back, very secure with a high polished wave in the center, surrounded by brushing and all the specs on there. Now I don't have many Seiko divers on bracelets. I have Seiko monsters on rubber and I do have a sumo, but just looking at what's gone into this bracelet, it's predominantly brushed, a nice rugged look. And yet at the end of each link, there's lovely fine polish, which just plays with the light. High polish on the edges and a standard Seiko clasp. This one nice and tight and crisp, loads of micro adjust. So in summary, it's not just the dial, which was obviously the main selling point on this watch. It's not just the dial, it's the other aspects that have gone into the whole creation. The light play across the bezel, the brushed and polished elements, continuing on to the bracelet. That's a nice bracelet. And this is the standard Save the Ocean offering from 2021. Hey, thanks for staying till the end if you did, by the way. A lovely little watch that I wear more and more the more that I wear it. Coming up the next few weeks, one or two more reviews before the annual State of the Collection. It'll be my second State of the Collection video. I try to bring those out <clears throat> between Christmas and New Year because that's a very quiet time and everybody's stuck in front of the TV. So uh, I look forward to that. There's been a lot of changes, a lot of turnover this year. Some, st some stickers um, and many others that have moved on that I thought would never move on. And that's what happens with watch collectors. Our tastes change. And for me personally, I'm definitely going down a couple of specific routes in what just fits me perfectly on the wrist. It takes my fancy. So until next time, I'll see you soon.